So, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are doing 75 days after 75 hard. One of the biggest things about these challenges is that, look, it can be great while you do it, but ultimately, did anything change after the challenge? That's one of the reasons why people do 75 hard, is not only for the actual challenge itself, is that it's supposed to also build habits that sort of last with you, stay with you, for longer than the 75 days. So this video is really just recapping on that. Has this sort of stuff happened? What have I noticed the changes in? And not only that, but I get a lot of frequently asked questions. So I thought I'd do a little FAQ with you guys because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that wanna do it. Honestly, this video is going out in February. I actually think February is an amazing time to do 75 hard. If I were to do it again, February would be the time to do it because you get February, March, and April to do it and then you're straight into summer. You're gonna be feeling great, you're gonna be looking great, perfect time. So if you're thinking about it, do it, okay? But yes, I wanna ask a few questions because I have so many about people saying, should I get into it, should I not? Just quickly before I do that, let me tell you guys where I'm at with myself and how I've managed it post 75 hard. We'll go through the different things. So number one, training twice a day. No, I don't train twice a day. What? But I do still train once a day. I probably train about six times a week, and that one time a week is not a planned scheduled day off or anything. It's usually just because something pops up and I don't really wanna train at sort of like 10 p.m. at night because it's what ruins my sleep, so I'll avoid it. But yeah, I am way more active, and I found that it's not even really a thing. Like, before I used to be like, oh, I can't be asked to go to the gym or like that. Now, sometimes that'll creep in, but for the most time, like it's not even really a question of whether I will go to the gym that day. I just go. Does that make sense? And I think that's because when I was doing 75 hard, you just had to suck it up and, and, and do it. And you had to do it twice a day. So in my head, I'm there like, mate, if I managed to find time twice a day last time, just go. Do you know what I mean? So yes, I am absolutely still very active, more active than I've ever been 75 days on. The next thing from that was, we'll say the water, uh, drinking water. I'll be honest with you, I drink more water than I used to, but still I don't drink enough water. It was one of the things that I struggled with that I said was one of the hardest things to do about it, was just getting through that amount of water. I also, to be clear as well, sorry, going back to the original, the first point, and it's important to know, is I don't do nearly as much running. A lot of it is weight training focused. I would still like to do running, but if I'm honest with you, the weather, I know it sounds like excuses, I just don't enjoy doing it. And if I'm training once a day, I'll probably go and hit the gym but come March April time I'm really looking to get out there I actually really enjoy the social aspect of running and none of the boys at the moment are really on a running hype except for Reeve but Reeve is training for an ultra marathon so slightly different but yeah just wanted to to go over that drinking water I drink more but still not the same amount that you need to for 75 hard I would still like to increase my water intake but the main thing is just remembering man constantly walking around with a bottle of water is really annoying diet my diet has changed dramatically i really do eat a lot cleaner i'm a lot more conscious of what i'm eating before i would just eat whatever whenever now it's is this good for me how much protein is in it you know those sort of questions are being asked before it was just eat what you can i am still trying to eat more though and that has always been a problem for me is just eating more i need to start earlier it's something i'm working on but the good news is my diet is still good yes i do have fast food occasionally maybe like once a month but but it used to be multiple times a week. So we're definitely in an upwards trajectory with that. Reading. Now, reading is something, I'll be honest, I have sacked off, right? And I enjoyed my time reading, but I think I'm more of an audiobook guy. So I'm still consuming the content that you would get through reading and bits like that, but I'm definitely just more of a podcast type of person. I enjoy, I enjoyed reading, how it sort of calms you down, but a lot of the time I was just having to cram it in towards the end of the day because I had to, and there wasn't a lot of enjoyment in the reading. It was just quite good because it would just make me fall asleep. But I don't really have a problem falling asleep anyways so yeah i haven't done any reading i don't actually have any plans on or desire to go back to reading as long as i'm learning and through whatever medium i think that's important that you're constantly trying to improve yourself and and, and what you know 
alcohol. This is a really big one. I do drink alcohol. I always said throughout 75 Hard, this is not about me not drinking forever, but let it be known, my body was is still very sensitive to alcohol. My hangovers are way worse than they used to be. And that actually kind of works out pretty well. It's such a deterrent to drinking alcohol. Like When I used to go out, there was never such thing as just having one or two. It was always a go and ham. And there is that funny saying that, you know, you never go out for one or two. But genuinely now, I can happily go out and have one or two beers. Even last night, right? I went to watch the, uh, the football and I had two beers. That was it. I went home. Boom. Done. But in terms of drinking, maybe once a week. And if it is, like I said, it's probably only one or two. So it's been a fantastic change in terms of habits. Of course, and I always said this, for big occasions, for big events, a birthday, things like that, I'll go out and I'll, and I'll go and get drunk. And that's fine. I'm happy with that. But my moderation now is infinitely better. So it's been one of my favorite things that has come off the back of 75 Hard. But now let's get on to your frequently asked questions because there's a lot of people out there that want to get into it. So during my time, what diet did you do or was it just no alcohol? I didn't necessarily have like a strict diet. My diet was pretty loose in terms of what I could eat, but it was just about getting the calories in and it had to be relatively clean. No fast food and in particular, no burgers. That was such a big thing for me. I didn't wanna eat any burgers. That's like my, my cheat meal, if you will. They're not even the worst thing in the world, um, but I just knew they're such a weak point for me. And if I wanted to do this clean and get the results that I wanted, eating burgers was probably not gonna be the one that got me there. I ate a lot of chicken and rice. And I'll be honest with you, it did get a little bit boring and, and the food wasn't that exciting. And I really, really missed having desserts when I would go out to restaurants. It's one of my favorite things. Like if I go to a restaurant, I'm probably getting a dessert. And so that's something that now I do, but at the time there was no desserts. So yes, it was about trying to get 3, 000, over 3,000 calories in and trying to keep it as clean as I possibly could. You'll be in social situations where you go out and maybe the menu isn't necessarily that clean or that great. Instead of being super RC and just that guy, just choose the best thing that you possibly can on that menu for you. You know, don't go, oh, I'm not eating because this doesn't have this or this is a slightly away. No, don't be a prick. Enjoy your dinner, be social, and just choose, make the best decision you can from that menu. So Tom here asks, how long did it take for you to get into a habit where it became less of a challenge and more of a routine as I'm struggling to get into a habit of myself at the moment? Would love to do a challenge myself, but work commitments meant I couldn't keep at 75 hard as long as I wanted. Love the work. Now, I don't know what exactly your work commitments are, but this challenge is more about discipline than anything else. So you have to look at your day and figure out, right, in an ideal world, how can I make this work? Where can I find the time? And you have to make that time and then you have to stick to it. So if it means you have to be up at six in the morning, then you have to be up at six in the morning to go and get your hours, you know, work, uh, your hours workout done till seven. And then, I, I don't know, maybe work starts at nine from, you know, head into work at seven, get there for nine however it is and then you know is it during your lunch break are you going to go on a 45 minute walk um, because that's one of the most important things here it doesn't have to be intense exercise exercise in one of these things it can be gym in the morning six till seven it can, or maybe seven till eight and then an hour for you to get into work i don't know then when you're in work for your lunch break instead of just going and sitting at your desk or whatever go for a 45 minute walk maybe that's it and then you've got your evening free uh, or maybe work runs late for you quite frequently i don't know there are ways to make this work only in very exceptional circumstances can this just not work for you. I got a lot of people saying you only completed this because you're a YouTuber and absolutely it makes it a lot easier that I can move things around pretty willy-nilly but at the same time I had to be disciplined. I still had to get it done. I still had the same mental challenge as you guys but you have to look at your day and say, where's this fitting in and then stick to it. And you're gonna to have to say no to a lot of stuff as well. That was one of the things for me. There was a lot of social situations that I really wanted to go out, go and do things, but I knew I would mean that I would sleep in the next day or not feel great the next day. So I had to say no. And trust me, that is probably the most powerful part of it. You never ended up talking about the Atomic Hammocks book that you started reading. What did you think? Oh, sorry about that, Matt. But yeah, loved it, would recommend it. It is good for building habits. There's definitely things that I took away from it. I still think I can do better at building habits, but at the moment I've got a lot of habits that I really like. There's probably a couple that I could have improved on, but the, the book is really eye-opening in terms of how you can make it as easy as possible to achieve these, these habits, I guess. 
and th there's little ways through like habit stacking. There's a lot of different techniques that you can do that just make it almost automatic for you without realizing it. Sounds kind of weird, would highly recommend that book. I know, I think Simon read it, he found it really helpful. A lot of people that I've spoken to have gone on to read it and they really liked it, so. Uh, a question here from Draper, or Ethan, sorry. Do you think 75 hard is possible if you work a normal job in terms of doing two workouts a day while having a job that doesn't provide much flex when it comes to going to the office at the time? I kind of just already spoke about that. Yes, you may have to wake up earlier. You, you, you're gonna have to make sacrifices, but the whole point is it's 75 hard challenge. It's not supposed to be easy. That's it, really. Can you go through things you ate on a daily basis, what a normal day of eating would look like to you? I kind of went over that in the video, but the most important meal for me, which I am often told is not an important meal, is breakfast. And that was purely because it made me hungry earlier. It sounds strange, but when I ate earlier in the day, it started a feeling and I would be very hungry by lunch and then I would be very hungry by dinner. It was when I missed the breakfast, I would really struggle to get the calories in. In terms of what I ate throughout the day, like I said, a lot of chicken and rice. I don't want to go over myself, but yeah, I mentioned it earlier in the video. What are the rules in terms of when you get an illness, etc.? This kind of sounds a little bit crazy, but there is no rules. You just have to do it. Now, that it, look, if you get diagnosed with cancer or something, you could stop the challenge. You can come back another time, right? But illness, there, there's easier workouts to do. And again, not everything has to be an intense like gym, sprints, like you don't have to do that. Go for a 45 minute walk in the day. You can even do yoga in the evening, indoors. That is considered a workout. So there's ways to do it to suit your sort of current needs, I guess. And during the illness, I, I was having to you know, go on these longer walks. I would still try and get a run in, but it might be super slow, but the whole point was I just had to get it done. And look, in the real world, if I was ill, I would just take a step back and let my body recover and just treat it nicely. But it's a challenge, I had to get it done. It might not be what's best for you, but it's what's part of the challenge. What was the hardest part about doing the challenge? Honestly, it was saying no to a lot of things. I'm very much a social guy. I love hanging out with my friends. I find that a really important part of my life. And for me to say no, that was quite difficult, but I knew it was 75 days and my FOMO just had to be parked off to the side. Kenny Hunter asks, apart from getting fit, what kept you motivated through the 75 days? Truthfully, it was, I, I'd put it out there for accountability. Part of the motivation was there like, I can't really let myself down. People online knew that I was doing it and I wanted to do it. And it's a weird one, right? So motivation for me is strange because motivation for me is, is like this. I really never wanted that when the motivation was down low, that I just wouldn't do things. Do you know what I mean? I found that if I relied on motivation to achieve things, nothing was consistent. And you need consistency to reach your goals. And it, this sounds kind of weird, but even when I was, you know, when we're working on the podcast, we, we have not missed a week in that podcast in three and a half years. It's because of the consistency and showing up every single week and doing it that we managed to, to get to where we are now with the podcast. And it's sort of the same thing with your fitness. You have to be there, you have to do it. And you're gonna have those times where the motivation's up and down, but it's the discipline and the fact that you're just turning up regardless of what your motivation is like. Um, so really, uh, m my biggest tip would actually be do not rely on motivation. Get yourself to a point where you're, you're disciplined enough that you'll just, you'll go. Like you have to, uh, in a weird way, I had like a bit of a zombie mindset. Like I could be in the most foul mood or whatever. I just go and get it done. Like I was lay on the couch, I'd be so f knackered. I'd be absolutely screwed. And I just like got up and just went and did it. I was in a bad mood. I was tired, but I just you just get it done and then that was it. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's such a weird thing to say and I hope it's coming across the right way. But yeah, and I hope I, hope I answered your question as well. Don't rely on motivation is, is a thing. Just, you just gotta go, go and get it done. Uh, Joe Cox said, how do I use Whoop properly? It's mad confusing. So you guys would have seen, and I still have it here, my Whoop band. It is just a like a fitness health tracker. It's a, it was a super important part of my journey. I know it was sponsored by them, but I did actually reach out to them because I was gonna use this product regardless during this challenge. And they were kind enough to get involved. So that's super helpful. The watch is as much as you wanna put into it and you care about it, it will give you more back. Does that make sense? If you just take it for what it is and you can do that and you can see look hey i had good sleep last night i had xyz the day before like my recovery is good it's like okay but why the whole point 
of Whoop is to figure out the whys. What is causing you to have a bad night's sleep? What is causing you to have a really good recovery the next day? Was there certain things you did the day before? And that's where there's like a journal feature on there and I was filling that out a lot and that works it out for you. It'll be there like, oh, you went to bed at like 12 last night um, and you had caffeine at like 6 p.m. Every time that you have caffeine at 6 p.m., your sleep tends to be worse. And so it will tell you that caffeine late at night has a minus 10% on your recovery. Do you know what I mean? So stuff like that. So if the more information you give it, the more it will give you back. And I think that was a really important part for me. I learned a lot, especially about like eating late at night. If I found that if I was eating late at night, my HRV would suffer and that was the real indicator as to how much of good recovery I would have the next day. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but for me, it was definitely worth it. Do you feel like the challenge is slightly cheated when 90% of second workouts of the day are just a walk, say to and from work? Not really. Like I said, you know, it's, it's up to you. There would be days where, you know, uh, the majority of days, if I can, I will get to decent work, like a run and a, and a gym session. But if you walk to and from work, like uh, I think doing two walks is probably, you know, I'd be a bit side eye on that one. But if you want to do one walk a day, like you would be surprised as to how much of a difference that will make and, and where your heart rate goes into. If you put a decent pace on that walk, walk as well, you'd be surprised as to how beneficial it can be. And that's why you find that a lot of people, at least from what I've seen, when they're overweight and like quite overweight and they actually can't run or, you know, going to the gym is, is genuinely too much, then even just starting them on going on walks is like a massive thing. And you know, you'd know, be surprised a lot of people just can't even walk for more than like 10, 15 minutes. So you can get that heart rate going and it, it does make a difference. Somebody here asked me, did I train legs during this thing? Because I was doing quite a lot of running and I actually did not train legs at any point during the 75 hard challenge, purely because from the running, I, my legs were just pretty beat up and I was very, very, very scared about injuries. I really think that in the 75 hard challenge, one of the best things that you can do is just stay healthy. And that's the most important thing because it's gonna make the challenge a lot easier. So I didn't actually do leg days now. Obviously going and, and going to the gym a little bit more frequently instead of doing a lot of running, I've implemented leg days, but yeah, like even, you know, I've actually just playing paddle recently. I, I'd done my knee a little bit and that would have really scuppered the 75 hard challenge or made it slightly more difficult anyways. So yeah, I'll be honest, I did not, I did not do leg days during 75 hard. I did, I did running instead. Do you think it's helped with day-to-day -day anxiety and depression? You know, touch wood, I'm very, very lucky in a way that I, I'm, I don't suffer too much from either of those two things. Um, and I would hate to speak on behalf of people that do suffer with it a lot. One thing I will say though is exercising frequently as much, you know, it, it, once a day will make a massive difference. It, it will help you. I, I'd be surprised if there's anyone out there that has worked out or done some form of exercise every single day and said that their mental health has gone gotten worse because of it. So yeah, let me leave it at that because that's all I can really talk about. Have you put on much weight since you stopped? Not really. I actually, I, I want to put on weight and I'm, I'm struggling to because I'm doing more exercise now more than ever. I'm just having to eat more. So yeah. Does clarting count as an exercise? Interesting question. Uh, I mean, if you're going 45 minutes at it and you've got a whoop band on and it's detecting an activity, I would argue that you could probably, you could probably make that count, but you'd have to be, you'd have to be a bit of a stallion to, to make that count. And fair enough. If, if you are him, then you are him. Make it count. How long did it take to see results? I was taking pictures throughout. I actually think after the first month, I, I, I looked back at the first photo. I was like, oh, I see, I see a little something there. But yeah, I didn't really look till, till, till the end. And then I was like, pretty happy with how it worked out. Was it hard to stay mo motivated to keep going and pushing through days with bad weather and so on? In a weird way, right? I actually preferred the bad weather because it was quite exciting. So going running in the rain. Yeah, it was a bit grim to begin with. Like the first five minutes, you're like, oh, what the hell am I doing? But then after that, I don't know. Like other people have said it too. They prefer running in the rain. And I actually completely see why. Um, right, I'll do a couple more and we'll wrap this thing up. Has your body changed since finishing the challenge? Yeah, I would say it has. 
I'm probably not as lean as I was in that, but that is intentional because I am trying to put on weight. I'm trying to gain more muscle. And in order to do that, I need to eat uh, in a calorie surplus to try and gain that muscle. So I'm, I'm by no means like become fat or up to the body, uh, body fat percentage. I think in the video, I was about 13.8 or something like that. And the final, I'm probably about 14 and a half, maybe 15% now. Um, and I'd like to stay around there. I think it's a pretty, pretty good space, especially while I'm trying to build muscle skills. I'm on day 36. What was your workout schedule? Was it tailored to you working out or is it a generic one? Well, first of all, congrats on making it day 36. They say that if you get past the first sort of 10 to 14 days and you usually, most people go on to complete the challenge. So big shout out to Elijah. I think that's how you say it. Was the workout tailored to me? No. So I, I sort of just did it myself. It was very much about what the day would allow me to do, what I had work-wise going on. And this is one of the things a lot of people, they're like, oh, you couldn't do this with a nine to five and you can do it with a nine to five. In fact, it's slightly easier, I would say, in terms of deciding what you're gonna do. If you have a nine to five, then you know when you're done, right? You know what time you start, you know what time you finish. And in, in when you're doing sort of maybe like a more of a freelance role, if you're working with something where the hours are a lot more flexible, that's a lot more difficult because you don't know like, oh, uh, I've, I've come into the office today and filming's ran on ages. And now I'm getting home at like nine, 10 when I thought I was getting home at six. So you've got to make another workout happen. So if you have a, a, a pretty rigid schedule for the day, then yeah, you, 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 can, you can have it how you want it to be. You can tailor it to yourself. Um, I, I just did push pull legs. All right, that was, that was my gym side of things. So push day and then like a run later. And then the next day would be like a pull and then a run, maybe legs and then a walk or, you know, or like football and then push. You know what I mean? So it's all just all, all, all like that. But I, I would change it every day because my job means that I'm doing different stuff every day anyways. All right, we'll leave it with the last one. And this was, did you ever come close to giving up? Um, there was only one time in which I was there. I, I was trying to find like weasel my way out of it. And that was when I was ill. And you can see that in the video. I was there like, oh, I was seeing like, is there any sort of rules going around? And that lasted about five minutes before I just sort of looked at myself in the mirror and I just said, fucking sort it out. It, I am capable of standing up. I am capable of going on a slow paced walk for 45 minutes to get this done while I'm ill. And that's what I did. So yeah, to answer that question when I was down bad and I was ill still managed to find a way to get it done but there was probably a five minute period where I was there like oh I wonder if I could just not do today and then resume this when I'm feeling better but yeah I didn't do it that way so yes guys hopefully that all made sense to you I know I've waffled on a fair bit but Maybe I've answered a lot of questions. Maybe there's some stuff that you could have learned from that. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like, leave a thumbs up. Check out the link down below if you want to grab yourself a whoop and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.